The Lutetium Project's Microfluidics Adventures, Chapter 2. We recently published the first episode of our Microfluidics Adventures. Click here if you haven't seen it yet. Microfluidics is fluid dynamics at the microscopic scale, and fluid dynamics is the science of flows. So what we want is to make liquids flow at the micro scale. How do we do that? In a microfluidic system, you often find the same components. Pumps, valves, pipes, and all of these are no larger than a hair. It's basically micro-plumbing. So, what do we need? First of all, we need to make several different liquids enter the system. Then, we need to build channels to make them circulate. Then, well, we need to make something happen. That's kind of why we built the whole circuit in the first place. So, the liquids interact. We'll talk about that in Chapter 3. Finally, we need to analyze or collect the volumes we've transformed. And the goal is to make all of it hold on a glass slide. Like this one. It's only a few square centimeters, and did you see all the things we want to put on it? That's what is called a lab on a chip device. Let's take an example. Let's say we want to create a microfluidic circuit which produces water droplets in oil. To do that, we're going to use a well-known technique, flow focusing. In our microfluidic chip, there's going to be a channel where we're going to make the water flow. We're also going to put two channels transporting oil, which will connect with the water channel at a right angle. The oil is going to pinch the water and fragment it into small drops, and we'll collect them in a big pool. So there, we have the outline of our circuit. We know what we want to do. Now, how do we do it? By micro-molding. We'll create a mold based on the outline. On that mold, we'll pour plastic. We'll turn the plastic into a solid, take away the mold, and glue the plastic on a glass slide. Now we have pits where we drew channels. Of course, when we get into details, it's a bit more complicated than that. And I can already guess your questions. First of all, how do we make the mold? We're going to use the technique of photolithography. We're going to engrave a pattern on a substrate with the use of light. First, we create a mask. We imprint the negative of the channel's pattern on a transparent sheet of plastic. Then we'll need a silicon wafer as support, and a layer of resin which will spread on the support. If this resin is exposed to light when heated, it can't be dissolved in a solvent. So if it's lit up through the mask, the zones corresponding to the channels are the only ones which become insoluble. We can then get rid of the rest of the resin by immersing it into a solvent called the developer. And now we have our mold. That was theory. How does it work in practice? We said we wanted microscopic channels, but if we don't make them in the proper environment, it only takes a single grain of dust in the channels to block them. This means we have to work in an extremely clean room. It's literally called a clean room. And since we're doing photolithography in there, we're not going to choose the color of the lighting at random. We're going to light the clean room in orange. Our resin is sensitive to green light. If we shined this color on it, there would be a parasitic exposure. That's why we use orange, which happens to be a color that does not contain any green. It's kind of like developing analog photos. So here we go. We take a silicon wafer and pour resin on top. We spread it by spinning it very fast and heat it up to solidify the resin. Then we take the mask and put it in the lithography machine. We also put our wafer with the resin. We light it up, take the resin back out, heat it up and develop it. We get rid of the non-lit up parts with the solvent. We clean it, and the mold is ready. Now the plastic. Most of the time, we use polydimethyl siloxane, also known as PDMS. When bought, it looks like a transparent and viscous liquid. But it can easily be solidified thanks to a compound called Crosslinker, which creates chemical bonds between the PDMS chains. So really, all that needs to be done is pouring it on the mold when it's liquid, then hardening it. And that's what we're going to do. We start by surrounding the mold with aluminum. We take liquid PDMS, then some crosslinker, mix them together and pour the mixture on the mold. The whole setup is put under a vacuum bell to eliminate air bubbles, and then we wait for about 10 minutes. Once the bubbles are gone, we take the PDMS and put it in a heated enclosure to speed up crosslinking. After an hour, we can take out the PDMS which has become solid. We take away the aluminum and the mold and cut out of the PDMS the area around the circuit we want. Now we just need to make holes with a punch for the liquid's inlets and outlets. At this point we're almost done. 
We have our channels molded in PDMS, but they're still open on one side. We're going to close them by sticking them to glass. And the glue is nothing less than plasma. We're going to put the PDMS chip in a glass slide in an atmosphere of extremely energetic pure dioxygen. It will make every exposed surface very reactive. All it takes is putting the PDMS on the slide for chemical bonds to form. We've just made an irreversible bonding. So there you have it. In this video, we saw how we get from this to this. Now the question is, what are we going to do with it? Well, emulsions, which we'll talk about in the third and last chapter of our microfluidics adventures. If you like this video and don't want to miss the next ones, feel free to subscribe. And if you have anything to say about the video or its content, you can always leave a comment. Thank you.